everyone, it's Rebecca from DevourDinner.com and welcome to my kitchen. Happy Sunday everyone, happy Easter everyone. I hope you're all safe at home, doing well, and that your life is blessed. There's so many wonderful things. All right, as we uh, are connecting here, we're going to let our groups know what's going on. And I'm, as always, going to drop into the comments the recipe that we're doing so that you guys will all know what's going on. There we go. All right, we're starting to see some people on. Welcome, welcome. I just dropped in the comments uh, a link to the cinnamon roll recipe. Thank you for being here. Go ahead and say hello in the comments. There they are. Eileen, hello. Amy, welcome. Happy Easter. Lynn, hello. Happy Easter. Happy Sunday, everybody. Um, hello, Sherry. Oh my gosh. Hello from 83 degree Austin. Okay, Sherry, let's have a little chat, friends. I think tonight our low is going to be 18 degrees. Did you hear me? 18 degrees. How crazy is that? Hello, Phyllis. Um, oh, yeah, Phyllis, this is my Bosch mixer that we're going to use today. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit. Hey, Dee, how are you, friend? Happy Easter. Welcome. Hello, Susan. Okay. Gail, hello. I see Gail now is on. Hello, Jen. Welcome, you guys. Today, I decided that I would go live for a couple of reasons. One, there is just a lot of stress in the world going on. And today is a beautiful Easter Sunday. And I sure hope that you have spent a portion of the day with your friends or your family, social distance, of course, which may mean you've been on Zoom calls, um, on FaceTime calls, or whatever it may be to connect to your loved ones in a safe manner. But I thought, Let's go live and teach something that's a little bit different than my normal recipes that you guys have been asking for for some time. And it's actually my favorite trick tip with the pressure cooker. And that is proofing dough in your Instapot, your multi-pot, your pressure cooker all the way around. So we're going to do that today. And we're going to make a variety of recipes. So I dropped the link and I'll drop it again because I know it gets buried. This makes a huge recipe, a huge batch. But first we're gonna start out um, and I'm gonna make a half batch. So when you're looking at this recipe, you can cut it in half. The biggest question that I get is, the recipe calls for three eggs. How do I cut three eggs in half? Guess what, friends? Use two eggs. You're gonna be all right. That's what I do. There's a variety of ways you could measure out an egg, um, but that's how I do it. So what I've started is I have this bowl right here that has water, oil, sugar, salt, and yeast. And the yeast has been growing now for about four minutes. You can see it's all frothy on the top. We had a question the other day from someone who said, um, my cinnamon rolls didn't work, what happened? It turned out their yeast never kind of grew. It just was bad yeast, which can happen. Um, so you wanna make sure that your yeast kind of is frothy. You'll actually even see the difference. So you get kind of a light and a dark because it's growing. It's exactly what you want. I'm going to use my Bosch mixer. I love my Bosch. I've used a Bosch since I was a wee little girl. This is how I learned how to make bread and cookies and treats and snacks and all those good things. I do have a review up on my site on why I love my Bosch um, and what is it. It is a stand mixer. It can handle massive stuff. So let's get going. Um, what? No. All right, I've got Bill over in the wings today because he's actually gonna be baking all of this stuff since I don't have an oven here on set. What I'm doing right now is just putting in a couple of cups of uh, flour into my mixer. The recipe when I half it is gonna be about five cups of flour and so I've put in, I don't know, two, maybe two and a half cups. And then I'm just going to pour this yeast in Get this out of the way. There's 
Okay, this is going to be loud. I'm going to try to talk over it. I don't know how much you guys are going to hear. You guys can see the picture in picture and it'll just start mixing up a little bit there. We're going to go ahead and add our eggs one at a time. Let that do its magic. Again, in that liquid mixture was warm water with my yeast, sugar, oil, and salt. And we're just gonna mix that with our flour. So little by little, I'm just gonna add flour. Now I've pre-measured my flour so I know how much to put in. I had five cups going on over here. And of course, it'll take some time to knead it all up. We'll go big for a second so you guys can really see what's happening. And it just mixes all of that stuff up so it's like perfect. I add that flour in how that dough is circling more in that center tower as it's being kneaded and stuff and that's exactly what we want to have happen um, the dough is still super sticky as we add more flour you're gonna see it group and almost clump to one side and it'll clean the sides of the bowl and that's kind of how we know um, how sticky it is need for a minute. Um, we really want to let it need for a few minutes. I know it's loud, you guys, um, but we really want to work the dough. Otherwise, we're not going to get a nice smooth dough that rises well, and this is just part of the process. So bear with me for just a little bit longer as the dough is doing its thing. You can see that it's clumping up in the space, and that's exactly what we want. That's exactly how um, the Bosch will work. I saw on here, um, somebody commented they've had a Bosch for 36 years. I don't see it now. Um, but I love my Bosch. I absolutely love it. I'm gonna add a little bit more flour. Uh, tell me in the comments so I can read it if you guys can hear me. Hi, Linda. Hi, Bridget. Christina. Hey, Megan. How are you, Megan? Good to see you. Hey, Melissa. All right, Melissa, is that a thumbs up? You can hear me? I'm not sure you can. Oh, good. All right, Gail's awesome. Gail just told me you can hear me, which is great. So we're gonna let that run just another minute. Normally, I would let it need more, but, but just for the timing, we won't today. Hi, Janine, happy Easter. Hi, Peggy, thank you, Peggy. You guys are awesome. Uh, 
All right, we're close. Okay, now I would let that go longer, but it's all good. We don't wanna let it sit there forever today. You guys get the gist of it on making bread. Here is the tip. Now, this tip works with pressure cookers that have the yogurt setting. Super important to realize that. Um, what you do is you're gonna take your liner, right? You're gonna spray that. Oops, hold on. You're gonna spray the inside of the pot with some cooking spray. And that's so that nothing sticks. And then we are going to get some of this off. All right, this becomes a little messy. It's all good. I've got Bill in the wings today cleaning stuff for me as we go that we'll be using again. So remember, this is just a little half batch. I have pre-made a full batch that is already rising so that we don't have to wait. And all I do is I take my rubber spatula and just pull it off the sides and the bottom All right, here's my dough. I can play with it just a little bit. As long as I move my hands, it doesn't stick to me. If I stop, it's kind of like slime and it'll start to fall and it'll stick more. Now, what do I do? I take it, you guys can't even see. Hold on. I take my pot, and I'm gonna put it right in my pot. Okay, just like that, you guys see? Then I'm gonna put it into my pressure cooker. I'm gonna take a lid. This is a lid that fits my six quart. You can use a dinner plate. You can use a glass lid from one of your pots and pans. It doesn't matter. Put the lid on. And then I'm gonna set it to yogurt. And I do yogurt normal is what I do. So um, that's what I do. Just leave that go. And then we're just gonna set it. Now, a lot of people ask the questions, what do I do if I don't have a yogurt setting? What do I do? Some people have tried to use the keep warm feature. The keep warm actually is too warm. It'll actually start cooking your dough. So that's not a great idea. It'll kind of work, but it's not a great idea. Another tip you can do, sounds crazy, put your dough into a glass bowl or any kind of bowl or your liner and set it on top of a heating pad on a low setting. The heating pad will warm things up and it will prove quicker as well, um, which is another fun little tip. You can also warm your oven up to about 200 degrees and then turn it off. Place your bowl in the oven covered with a towel or some saran wrap um, and let it proof in the warmer oven. That helps it too. So those are just a couple of methods to help cut the time in half. I love the Instapot, doing it with the Instapot or the Multipot, um, just because it's just so easy for me. I can just set it and forget it, um, and it just works magic. So let me give this to Bill. Now we are going to. Here, I'm going to move this pressure cooker offset, and I'm going to let it do its magic over here, because of course I made dough up beforehand. It's almost done rising, so we can just get right to the fun stuff and show you guys what we're doing. So the first recipe that I'm going to make is, let me get to it. It is a cinnamon twist. I'm going to put the link over here. A cinnamon twist is almost cheating. You guys are going to see how fast and easy this is. I actually do these as neighbor gifts at Christmas time, and I make smaller ones um, because they're so fast and easy, and they bake up so quick. Um, and they look, the presentation is an A++, and it's so fast and easy, okay? So we're going to start with that one. Let me move this off.
Um, let me. All right. We have our new setup going on here. I'm trying to protect the computer today with all the flour. What am I doing? I've missed so many of your fun comments. First of all, you guys, thank you for joining me on Easter Sunday. Happy Easter and welcome to all of you. Welcome to the Instapot 101 family. Welcome to Gail, who does so much in helping dropping links for me. Like seriously, I couldn't do it without her. Amy's on as well with Instapot 101 for beginners. Um, and I know there's a couple of others that share this into, that are moderators that share it into groups. And I so appreciate it. So thank you. And if you haven't liked this video, please like, give me a thumbs up, give me a heart on the video itself. That's over in the comment section on your right hand side. Hit one of those buttons if you guys will. <laughs> oh, Nancy, Nancy, Nancy. Okay, Nancy says, I've done this recipe last year from your Devour Dinner YouTube channel. It's the best for dinner rolls. It is, it totally is. This is my recipe that I make dinner rolls, I make pizza crust, I make cinnamon rolls, I do it all with it. Like, that's how much I love this recipe. So, let me grab. All right, look at this, you guys. You see my dough? Isn't that beautiful? We'll put it right there in the middle. So that has now been raising. It's massive. I'm gonna break it up into portions because I can't possibly use it all at once for what I'm doing. Now, if I'm making cinnamon rolls, I break it up into three segments and do three cinnamon rolls with it, okay? Today, I'm just gonna be utilizing it a little bit differently. So typically what I do is I just kind of score it with my fingers to give a little bit of a, a distinction on what I'm gonna be using it for. And the first recipe, like I said, is gonna be a cinnamon twist. So I'm gonna take about this much. Oh, I want a little more. And then we're gonna pull this off. Can you guys still see what I'm doing if I get that out of the way? Now, we're gonna really make a mess of my work surface. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll this out. I'm gonna use my rolling pin, and you guys know, have you found my hidden Mickey today? I'm using another one of my Mickey kitchen things. And this I'm going to roll out about the size of a pizza pan. So remember, as you're rolling this out, I want it to be a circle. Then I'm gonna grab my pizza pan. I'm gonna give it a good little spray. And I'm gonna pick this up, place it right on the pan. Okay, just like that. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take sugar, white sugar. You can do this with brown sugar as well, but I'm gonna do it with white sugar. You could also put a little bit of butter. Um, I, If you put butter, don't put too much. You do not want as much butter as you would do normally in a cinnamon roll, um, but you could definitely put butter down. And I'm just sprinkling the butter, or not the butter, the sugar on top. And then I'm just going to do some cinnamon. As well. Okay. Now, 
We're gonna do that all over again. I need another bit of dough that I'm gonna roll out to the same size and I'm gonna put right on top. Keep that warm, you guys. All right, make sure your surface is floured so nothing sticks and we're just gonna roll that out again. And if it's not a perfect circle, it's okay. You guys, this is meant to be fun. So my dough is thin, it's not huge, okay? And I'm just setting that on top. I want you guys to see what I'm doing here. Okay, so it's just perfectly on top. We're gonna put more sugar. Kind of spread it around. We want it to get it all the way out to those edges. Don't be chintzy, friends. And then we're going to add a little more cinnamon. Okay. Now grab one of your glasses from your cupboard. Super simple. You can kind of get a little bit of flour on it and go right dead center. You guys see that? And cut it clear to the bottom. Like just twist and cut all the way to that bottom. And then you're gonna use your pizza cutter and you're gonna cut. Not all the way to the center, all but about an inch. Okay? You're gonna do these little wedge pieces all the way around. So far so good, now watch what we do. We're gonna pick up a segment, top and bottom. We're gonna do a full twist, set it back down with a thumbprint. Okay, I want you guys to see that close up. So I'm gonna to go top down for you. Cause it's a fun little tip. So I pick it up, I do a full twist and I thumbprint it. Full twist. And I work my way around this twist. Okay, this is a recipe, kid you not. I used to teach Sunday school at church. And my kids, if any of you guys are watching, they know I would bring this to Sunday school for them so that they would listen to Sunday school. And they loved it. But you can see just how beautiful it is. Like the presentation is just gorgeous, right? Like so pretty. All right, let's go back to this one. That's it. I'm now gonna pass this off. We're gonna get this baking. Um, this will bake 18 to 22 minutes. You want it to be toasty, golden brown, all the way around, and that's how you know it's done. So I'm gonna pass this off and get it in the oven. All right. What do you guys think of that one? Was that like fabulous? So easy. When we're all done, we're gonna make uh, frosting for it. I'm gonna drizzle frosting on it, and it is just so fun to make. Now, when I make those for my friends, for like um, Christmas and stuff, 
That was a big one. That was really big. I do tiny ones. So I'll do them about the size of a, of a holiday Christmas plate so that it'll fit on one of those. And so I can get six or more out of the batch on one of these, these batches I can make, just FYI if you're interested. So kind of fun. Hey, Zach, how are you? Zach just said, I love the cinnamon twists. Zach has had my cinnamon twists. Um, and they're so pretty, so delicious. Great gift to welcome someone new to the neighbor. Oh, that's true too. That'd be wonderful to, um, to do that as well. All right. The next recipe we're going to do is a cinnamon braid or a, a sweet braid, a sweet bread. And that is going to have um, some cream cheese and some pie filling in it. Today I'm gonna to use a triple berry pie filling. However, you could use apple pie filling, cherry or raspberry, blueberry, whatever you'd like. It is so fun. So again, I wanna make sure that I've got some flour down. So we can roll this out. And I'm gonna roll this into a rectangle. Now, don't be afraid to just manhandle your dough. Get it all organized. A little bit more flour going here. All right. Now, I don't want to roll this too wide, and I will explain here. We're going to put this on a cookie sheet. This is not pretty. but we do want it to be as rectangular as possible. Bill, will you get me one of my knives, my favorite knives, please? Okay, just gonna use a cookie sheet. I'm gonna spray this as well. this on. That was not pretty, you guys. Don't copy me. Do it better. All right. For this recipe, we're going to add some cream cheese and some berry pie filling. So, Sugar and stuff away too. Hey, Bill, will you microwave this for like 20 seconds? All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put cream cheese right down the middle, and I'm going to put berry pie filling right down the middle. And then I'm going to slice these edges so that I can braid it all up and sprinkle with a little bit of sugar. And then this is going to bake as well. And it becomes a beautiful cinnamon, or not cinnamon, berry twist. Um, we like to call it berries in the snow because when we put our frosting or our glaze drizzled on top, it looks like the berries are in snow and it's so pretty. Um, but whatever you call it, it's good. It's like way good. And I'll make sure. All right. So I am just going to, you guys still can see my top down. I use between four and six ounces of cream cheese when I make this, just to give you guys a guesstimate. And as you can see, I'm just putting it down this middle strip. Today I'm using about four is all. And then, like I said, I am using a triple berry. So it's raspberry, blackberry, blueberries. We're gonna put that right in the middle. You can use cherry, you can use raspberry, you could just use blackberry or blueberry, and you can use apple. 
If you use apple, adding some cinnamon to all of the this is fabulous. So keep that in mind. You really can't go wrong with whatever flavor you choose. I'm telling you. All right, then get your knife and you're gonna cut slits. And I cut my slits about an inch in width just to get a nice little braid going. I love that you guys are here. You guys, honestly, I just looked over and saw how many of you are on watching today, and I just need to tell you thank you. Um, I wasn't going to go live today. I thought it's Easter, and, and I'd let you guys be with your families, and nobody would be here to watch. And I received a number of messages from you guys saying, please go live. Please go live, because this is a bright, sunny moment in my week that I look forward to. This is a time when I can laugh and I can smile with all the stress going on. And it hit me that sometimes it's more than just the recipes that I do, that it's, I'm glad you guys come because you feel good and you laugh and you smile and you joke and you make my day most importantly by coming. And it's so important because I need it too. And so I just want to say thank you today. This one's for you guys, really. It's, it's all for you to just have some fun. All right. So here it is. And then what I just do is we just start braiding. So I just overlap. I go from one side to the other and I just kind of pull it down a little bit. So it's not straight across, but it's pulled down a little bit. Now when you get down to the bottom, I like to bring the bottom ones in and then pull these in on top. Okay? And there is our cinnamon braid, or our braid all the way. I'm going to add some cinnamon on top, or some sugar, no, not cinnamon. You guys, I'm struggling. I like to just sprinkle it in some sugar because this is berries in the snow. If I was doing apple pie filling, I definitely would now add cinnamon on top. This is also gonna cook about 18 to 22 minutes. In the meantime, this is just going to sit off to the side because obviously my oven's full. A lot of people ask with this recipe, do I do a second rise? The answer is no, I don't. Mostly because the recipe doesn't need it. Um, and obviously some things are getting a second rise while they're waiting to go in the oven, but it doesn't need it. Um, so it works any way you look at it. But there is our twist. We love these. Okay, this one's going. All right, you guys, one more. Are you ready? I am. I'm so ready. Let's clean this up. Get this stuff out of my way. And let's talk about what else we can do. So, the recipe's for cinnamon rolls. However, you heard someone on here say that they like it for dinner rolls as well, which are fabulous. It actually works really easy to make like Texas Roadhouse kind of rolls where you could take the dough and I do it in kind of a long rectangle and then I just slice it into those squares, put it on my pan and bake those up. Kid you not. Easy peasy. And about at this point in the game when I'm just worn out and exhausted because I've been in the kitchen and I've done so much, that's what I do. But today I want to show you one more fun tip with dough. You ready? <laughs> Gail says, you always make it look so easy. Gail, thank you so much. I try to make it look easy. Um, it's really not hard. It just takes time um, is really what it is. 
So what we're going to do today is I'm going to make pizza rolls. Do you guys hear that? Pizza rolls. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go back to our dough. Put a little bit of flour on top. And I'm going to get this out of the way. So you guys have made cinnamon rolls, right? Or at least if you haven't ever made cinnamon rolls, I hope you'll make cinnamon rolls or cinnamon twists after this, um, after this demo. We're going to basically do just as if this were cinnamon rolls. But instead of putting the traditional butter with brown sugar and cinnamon, we're going to put pizza sauce and pizza toppings and cheese in it. Okay, the first time I did this for my kids, their mind blew. Like they were like, whoa, mom. So now we do it quite often because we can't. So again, you're just gonna roll this out into a rectangle. Now I've got some pizza sauce. This is actually a homemade sauce that we love that I grew up using. You can use jarred sauce, bottled sauce, plain old tomato sauce. This recipe is not on my website yet, you guys. I know I can hear you guys screaming at me right now. I'm sorry. Um, I actually grew up on this. So this is a recipe my mom made as tomato sauce, tomato paste, basil, oregano, lots of great herbs. A little bit of sugar to cut the acid in it. A um, little bit of lemon juice as well, believe it or not. Um, it's like fabulous. And I always make extra because we like to dip our pizza into extra sauce. You can thicken it up, you can thin it down, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. All right. And today I'm only gonna do pepperoni. I know, kind of boring, sorry guys. Um, and I'm just gonna line this out. So because it's a roll, normally when you would make pizza, you'd kind of spread out your pepperoni but I want you to think on how this is gonna be cut. And we wanna make sure that every slice gets pepperoni. Now you can always do this with some shredded chicken and use a barbecue sauce. Um, put some chicken in there, maybe some bell peppers. Um, you can even do it Hawaiian style and throw in some pineapple. But you do wanna make sure that your toppings are little or thin. That's gonna be the catch, okay? So you can do Canadian bacon and pineapple, but chop your pineapple down. It almost works easier if you use um, crushed pineapple and then you let it drain so it gets lots of that juice out because you don't want all that extra juice um, if you're using pineapple. Okay, I love all these happy Easter. Happy Easter, you guys. I hope you guys all feel blessed today, that you can find something that you've been blessed with um, during this hard time. I feel like if we can always find things that blesses our lives, that brings us joy and happiness, even through these hard times and these heartaches and these struggles and this massive, massive stress, we can still find reason to smile and spread kindness to others. So if nothing else, please find something that brings you joy. Make a journal, write it down, so that every day you can look back over it, even if it's simple things. Today, I kid you not, you guys ready for something to laugh about? It's super funny. Um, today we decided to do an Easter egg hunt for my father. Okay, he's 77 years old. And we decided to do an Easter egg hunt for him, plastic Easter eggs. And we're social distancing from them, so we don't see them. But we went over to their front little area and we hid like 15 little plastic Easter eggs with candy in it and then sent him a text and said, hey, Peter Cottontail came, come. 
and he came out and he went back inside and my mom had got a little basket. He was elated. He was grinning from ear to ear. It was the cutest thing on the planet as he went and looked for his little eggs, which let me tell you, were hidden for like a two-year-old. So there was like one on the step and one on a bush and one on a little, the little handrail. It was hilarious. Seriously. You have the light on in the oven. You need to get the light off, please. All right, we're just going to add some mozzarella cheese to this. Now, of course, if you guys want to do cinnamon rolls, you add brown sugar, you add some butter, you add cinnamon, and then you're going to roll it up the same way. Um, to cut cinnamon rolls, you guys know the trick all over the place. You use some thread, and it cuts cinnamon rolls perfectly. Where, where I've got... Um, bigger ingredients, the string doesn't work. So we can't use string, I'll have to use a knife today. All right, and then we just roll this up. And I like to roll it up as tight as I can, which sometimes is easier said than done with all of these toppings in it. And you just pinch it on the top. Okay, shove it back in there. Fortunately, I find that cinnamon rolls are super forgiving. And so it's okay. We're going to get one final pan out. Spray that up. Now, I'm gonna cut off the ends. Oh, you know what, I don't want that. Okay. And I cut these in about two and a half inch segments. You gotta go kind of easy. As you see, some of that pepperoni is gonna poke its head out. That's okay. Looks like we're going to get a lot of pepperoni poking out today. All right, I do like to pull right from the middle. I like to get the biggest ones right in the center of my pan. I don't know why, but I do. Now, the cinnamon rolls, when you do it this way, they do kind of fall apart. It's just the nature of the beast, I think. But I promise you, your kids are going to love it. It's going to be fantastic. And then I'm just going to adjust some of these. There we go. Okay. Those are our pizza rolls. And those are going to cook again for that 18 to 22 minutes at 350 degrees. Um, they will kind of fall open. Again, that's just kind of what they do. But they're still so good. So we're going to push these off to the side. How much time is left? All right, you guys. Let me clean up this space. need a new towel over here because this one is horrible. And then we are 
gonna clean this up. So how I like to clean up when I have a lot of flour is I use a metal spatula, scrape it all down so that anything that's stuck is taken care of. The ends you can throw away. And I do this so that my when I use a wash rag, it doesn't get all gummy with the flour. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? When it gets gummy with flour. And then I just scrape it off into the trash. And now we'll just wipe this down. All right, who is ready to make some frosting? My glasses are falling off my nose today, you guys. I think it's because I can't touch them. Will you rinse that out for me? All right, should I say hi to some of you guys? I wanted this to be super easy where I could chat with you and I haven't got to chat with you much at all, but I hope while I've been doing it, I've been answering some of the commonly asked questions. If you're just joining in, thanks for being here. I love seeing these faces week after week. I love them. You guys, it just makes my day. I hope you're having a fabulous Easter all the way around. Okay, let's make some frosting. So for our frosting, we're gonna use our Bosch again. I need that top piece of my Bosch, the mixture thing. Oh, I see. There we go. And I have milk somewhere. Okay. All right. For this recipe, you guys are going to kill me. So on the, uh, the link for the cinnamon rolls, there is a, in the, the recipe card, um, I show you how to make um, frosting. It's a powdered sugar frosting with some butter, some um, vanilla, milk. It's fabulous. Today, I'm going to do a variation of that. Um, I'm going to do some butter along with some cream cheese because that's how I'm rolling today. And we are going to add some powdered sugar. And yeah, I'm dumping today, you guys. This is a total dump and go. Oh, Bill, can I have this little top piece that goes with this? So the Bosch, if you guys have seen what I've done, has this little lip, which helps keeps everything inside. It also has a piece on top. So it keeps like your flour, your powdered sugar from like poofing and making that cloud which I love. So we're just gonna let that mix up. And then I'm gonna add in some milk, some more powdered sugar. A little bit of vanilla. I'm using white clear vanilla today. And I'm gonna need lots of powdered sugar, so we're just gonna add it. It looks so good. So I put in about two teaspoons of vanilla and now I'm just gonna carefully with the milk, just a little bit at a time. It's really, it doesn't take much.
a little bit more. Okay, that's it. That is what we're doing. The cinnamon twist has come out of the oven. It is beautiful. Okay, beautiful. And I'm going to get some of this stuff off and out of the way so that... Oh, did you guys hear that? The bottom of the mixer has suction cups to hold it in place so it doesn't go bobbling around. Super fun little thing. Now, you guys, who wants to see Bill for a split second? Um, Bill's going to come over and bring the cinnamon twist. It is hot, so he's going to set it right on this so it's dead center and I can show you guys what we're going to do with it. Make sure you stop right there and turn around and wave. <laughs> and now we're going to see a bunch of high bills. Okay, can you guys see that? I'm going to go on a big top down so you guys get a better view. There we go. What do you guys think? Is that not presentation plus? Like, seriously, that is just gorgeous. Just absolutely gorgeous. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to put the frosting in a bag, snip the end, and I'm just going to drizzle on each one. One, excuse me. So it's perfect. But it's just a beautiful presentation. So let's get that going. Now I like to put it in a bag because... It's easy to pipe. So we're just going to pull this out, put it right in the bag. And I've got my little rubber spatula to do this. Now, this frosting will melt. This is still warm, really warm. So this will melt as I put it on. I'm just gonna snip the edge, the little edge, so I can just pipe it. There we go. You guys ready? You guys wanna see this when I do it big? Let's do that. Here we go. So what I do is I just go you guys tell that I can't talk and do this at the same time? I can multitask on hundreds of things. Clearly not this. There we go. Now you can dress this up with berries if you'd like. 
or not. As it cools, some of that, that glaze, that frosting is just gonna sink down in. And, and to serve it, it's super easy because remember we've made those twists. So you only have to cut a small portion and then you can serve it out. So this feeds a large group of people. If you ever have to go to a potluck, you'll be the hit of everybody. And you can see how fast and easy it really was to make. Um, this is my preferred way to make cinnamon rolls because it's so fast, so easy, and the cleanup is so magic. So it's like fabulous. So that is our cinnamon twist. Our berries in the snow is still in the oven. You guys are still hanging strong. We're hitting our hour mark, um, but have no fear. I'm gonna push that up to the side. Don't take that out early. It's close. Let it go like a minute longer than you think. Got it? <laughs> All right, I'm going to answer some questions. I get to answer questions. I'm so glad. All right. Mary says, good afternoon. Good morning. Good afternoon, Mary. Oh, Gail's asking her, made a great comment. Um, you can cut this dough in half. Um, so you guys saw the dough that I put in the Instapot um, to rice. It's huge. In fact, it's too big. Um, it's now ready for me to do stuff with as well. So here it is. When, as soon as I go off air, I'll mix this up as well and do something fun with it. Um, but it only takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 to 16 minutes for that to double in size. It's super fast and super great. Um, so it's easy that way. If you do cut the recipe in half, the recipe calls for three eggs. So when you cut it in half, I use two eggs. It's just easier that way. Um, of course, you could always take one of your eggs and scramble it and then use half of that scrambled portion if you wanna be more precise. I am not. I just will use two eggs and it works perfectly and it's great. Um, I do use this recipe for like lots of things. I will use it even for pizza crust. However, keep in mind, my family likes a thick pizza crust. Some people like a thin crust. This is not it. Um, this is nice and fluffy. You guys can see this here, just how nice this is. You know, it's a nice, thick, fluffy dough, and it's super light, and it's super airy. And so it's all kind of what you make of it that way. Um, so, yeah. Hey, Casey, happy Easter to you too. Um, hello, Michelle, Bridget, Deb, Phyllis, Jamie. You guys, I will go through and answer all these questions. Hey, somebody, Sherry, saying hi to Bill. Jen, saying hi to Bill. Lots of Bills in here. You guys are awesome. If you guys haven't liked this video, please, please like it. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a heart. Um, if you're seeing where all the comments are, that's just right up above the comments is where you want to like it and give it a heart, super important. It does tell Facebook that it's good content and shares it with more people, which is super helpful to me. Um, as you guys may or may not know, this is a small business for myself, and this is a way that I help bring income in for my family, especially during these hard times um, when everybody's hours have been cut back significantly. Um, and so it's super important that my content is shared. And one thing that you guys can do for not only myself, but all bloggers is like, comment and share um, when you see recipes um, or any posts, any of those bloggers out there. Um, that's how they generate revenue is by when you go to our websites. I know you guys hate the ads. Let me tell you a secret. I hate them too. I do. They're a pain. I don't like them, but it's the way we make money. Um, and that's why they're there. So keep that in mind. Those of you who have shared this live today, bless you. Thank you. It does mean the world to me. I, when I go off of my live and I see how many times it was shared, my heart just stops because I know that that's the love coming back from you guys. And I just appreciate it so much. So thank you to each of you who have already shared it. Um, to those of you who make my recipes and take your own photos and post it on your, live, your page or back into an Instapot group with my link, thank you. Those are magic. Those are absolute magic when you do that. Um, when you post your own photo, but include my link to the recipe um, to let people know that it was a great recipe. It brings a lot of traffic really quick. 
Um, and trust me, I notice and other bloggers that you do it for notice as well. So that's a little tip that you can do to spread joy to others, um, secretly even. So keep that in mind. Um, Bill Eileen says, hello. <laughs> Lisa says, it looks so good. And it does, you guys. It looks so good. Um, this next one's going to come out in a minute. I'm going to get another Mickey Mouse trivet. I do get these at Disneyland. This is a Disney product. You might even be able to get it on the Disney.com website. They're shopping. Oh, the rolling pin? Where is it? The rolling pin I also got off the Disney website. So the same place I got these, um, they were both purchased at Disneyland. However, you can get them. I know you can get the trivets on the Disney shopping webpage. Um, and here's the rolling pin. So it's really cute because it has the little hidden Mickey on it. So it's just, and it has all the little Mickeys up here. So that's kind of fun. Many of you always ask this cutting board back here. Also a hidden Mickey. Go ahead and bring that up. Um, that custom made, one of a kind, by this guy. Yes, I'm going to need those. Thanks. So he made this cutting board for me. I am a big Disney fanatic. Um, and it's a one of a kind on that one. All right. Our berries in the snow is now done. And it's hotter than hot. It just came out. Away. Just set it right there. I'm going to put some frosting on it as well. This is going to melt and slide off almost instantly because it's so hot. So sometimes I really like putting frosting on instantly because, well, it's just good. Um, but other times I like to let it sit like this so that it doesn't completely melt right up front. But I'm going to do kind of the same with just a little drizzly back and forth because it's pretty. And trust me, it melts all in. There we go. And it's fabulous. Can you guys get a good view of that? Let's go top down. See how pretty it is? You guys, it's so pretty. So there's two of our three. Our pizza rolls just went in the oven. They have another 15 plus minutes. And I'm probably not going to keep you guys on that long. Um, but well, it won't let me drop a picture of it. Darn it. Um, well, no. It won't let me drop a picture in. Um, I'll post a picture of ones that I've done before that I've taken pictures of. Um, to show you guys, they turn out really well. They're just like cinnamon rolls. Um, we serve them, like I said, with um, pizza sauce. So you can dip right into the pizza sauce. Um, my boys are eagerly awaiting off camera here for some of this yummy, yummy goodness. Um, why don't I cut into one of these? You guys want me to cut into this so you can see what it looks like? I'm going to need... Can I have that big serrated knife? And then can I have that square pan or plate, white plate over there. All right, I hear all the beeps down here. Lisa says, thanks for sharing. Lisa, you're welcome. Okay, Peggy's asking, did I use the same dough? Yes, this is all made with the same batch, actually, because it's such a large batch. Um, you can make I mean, it makes like 36 cinnamon rolls, which is huge. Um, the cool thing is, is you can make the cinnamon rolls and you can freeze them. So I would roll them up, put them on a pan, throw them in my freezer so they froze and then lift them off um, and then freeze and then like put them in a container individually or a, a plastic bag. When I'm ready to use them, I pull them out, let them thaw right on the pan and they'll sit there for a couple of hours just thawing and then I bake them up. And that's what's going to happen with this dough over here that I started this live with is I'll freeze that. Um, so it makes a lot. It really does. But let's cut into this. You guys ready? I'm going to go right here. This is like so hot. You 
guys. You guys see that? Oh my gosh. <gasps> okay. all sticky and here it is let's go top down give you guys a good view of it there we go it's just beautiful so let me tell you this is so fun to make it up you can see it's a lot for you and your family it's wonderful for breakfast um, but what we like to do is make it up and then we live by some neighbors they're just um, older couples and so I'll slice off two pieces and run them next door so that they get to enjoy some hot, nice, um, braided, fun treat. Um, and it's wonderful to share. Plus, it makes me feel good. And it's, you know, less on the hips. So kind of fun that way. Regardless, you guys, I will go back and answer all these questions. I was hoping I'd get to, like, chat with you today. Obviously, that didn't happen. But I hope you guys learned how easy it is to make these cinnamon rolls. They just fluff up and are gorgeous, and they're so, so good, and we love them. So you guys, with that, I just want to give a big shout out to Gail, who keeps dropping my links for me and answering questions, all of my top fans who come back week after week, who welcome all the newcomers. I know we have newcomers on here, um, and I love it. Welcome. You're always welcome here. Um, please ask your questions. I will get back to them, and I'll answer them. I won't answer them tonight till late tonight, probably. Um, I'm going to have some family time when I go off alive here. Um, but you guys stay safe, stay home where it's safe. There's a lot going on. It's crazy. Make memories, um, do some silly things that you wouldn't normally do. Find the joy in the chaos and it's okay. I, I promise it's okay. But with that, you guys, thank you once again from the bottom of my heart for coming and saying hi to me today. I love it. I love it. I love you guys being here. Um, you guys are a light in my life. So thank you. All right, you guys, with that, I'm going to peace out. You guys have a great week. I will be back next week with some great recipes. I've been recipe testing a lot of dinner recipes. So I'm hoping to get those out soon. Lisa's sending lots of hearts. I love it. Peggy says, stay safe. Stay safe. Um, Sherry says, I love the weekly gatherings. You guys, it's because of you. So thank you. I can't thank you enough. Um, happy Easter. Peace and blessings to all of you. Remember to be kind to one another, especially yourself. Remember, it's okay to take it just one step at a time, those baby steps. We got a lot going on, you guys, and you're doing awesome. And I'm cheering for you right along the way. Have a fantastic week. Love you guys. Bye.